Hi, I'm Todd Mansell, Product Application Specialist with Caterpillar Paving. Today we're going to go around and do a walk around on the GC SCOM series soil compactors. So as I approach the machine to open the hood, one thing I always want to do is take a look on the ground and make sure that there aren't any hydraulic oil spills, any, any leaks or fluids leaking on the ground. So I'll approach the machine, open the hood, and we'll do some checks on the machine. So now that I've got the hood raised, the first thing I'm going to do here is take a look, make sure the master electrical disconnect is turned on as I'm, before I do my walk arounds and then, then eventually start the machine. So with our walk arounds here, turn the switch on and I'm just going to follow things kind of in order. Everything's nicely positioned on the right side of the machine here so I'll look first at this fuel water separator. So this is a daily check and all these daily checks that I'm covering are covered in your OMM, your Operations and Maintenance Manual. So please always refer to that for specific details on any of these checks. So my fuel water separator, I'll check that, make sure there's no water in there. If there is, I would just turn that bowl and it does have the remote drain, have a little container here and drain that water out of that separator. Here's my main uh, fuel fill. So when it comes time to fill up with fuel, there's my, my fuel uh, port or door here. As I continue to walk around the machine, up here we have our engine coolant level. So even when it's cold, I should see some fluid in there. You can see it here at the, at the low point or the low marker on there. When it gets hot, of course, it'll, it'll be higher in there. But just check, make sure there's coolant in there. Here's my oil level check, so here's my, my oil level dipstick, pull that out, I can, I can take a look at the, the oil level here and just make sure that it is in the operating range. If it is at the, at the low end, I'll add oil and I'm able to add oil right here at the oil filler port. Right next to that, you can see a little yellow uh, plunger type gauge here. That is my air filter uh, flow check. That's something again to check on a on a daily basis. There is also an indicator in the cab on the at the operator's display that will alert you if there's restricted airflow. But this is another another check here and again refer to the OMM for details on how to check that but you do check that when the machine is at high idle. When you do change an air filter, that is also, uh, you will reset that, that plunger so it's back in the yellow. So, so as we continue to walk around the machine here, the next thing I'll look at on the right side of the machine is the hydraulic oil level sight glass. And I should always see some, it's a reddish color, I should always see some hydraulic oil fluid in that sight glass. This particular machine right now is, is low on fluid, so we don't see any in that sight glass. Once it warms up, you'll see that uh, level higher in there. But another daily check to make sure it has some fluid in there before we continue around the machine. The next thing I'll look at here on this cab version is our fill port for the windshield washer fluid. So again, we've got an indicator in the machine, but we can also check it here and just make sure we've got washer fluid in for that windshield. As we continue going around the machine here, the next thing I'll check are these rubber isolators or iso mounts. And these are what separate the drum from the frame of the machine. Reduces the vibration to the operator and the cab and all that. But these always need to be inspected just to make sure there aren't any cracks developing or separating from the steel. So just take a check. There's uh, six isolators on, on both sides of the drum. So just take a look at those and make sure that they're not torqued or cracking or separating from the steel on the machine. We'll continue around to the front of the machine now. I'm going to look down in the drum area here and check 
the scraper bars just to make sure that they are there isn't any debris sitting in there a little bit of dirt's fine um, adjust these if necessary so they're typically maybe a, a, a little little bit off of the drum uh, just enough to scrape off that excess material but check those make sure they're tight and they're not damaged and there isn't, isn't some debris such as rocks tree branches anything like that sitting in that area so now I'm over on the left side of the machine we've checked uh, everything under the hood on the right side there checked our ISO ice amounts isolators on the other side of the drum I'm gonna do the same thing again over here check those rubber isolators the same thing as we saw on the other side again even though I've looked on the ground for fluid leaks I'm always kind of scanning to make sure the hoses are in good shape and, and protected another thing we want to check before we get in the cab and start operating the machine is to check and make sure that that steering locking pin is disengaged or in the operating position so that pin is used for transportation of the machine when we load it on trucks we put that pin in there to lock the frame from being able to move but when we get on the on the job site we need to remove that pin put it in its holding position before we start to operate the machine we also want to make sure on our walk around that we check the tire condition on both sides of the machine so that especially taking a look at the side walls both on the outside here and back here on the inside make sure the side walls look in, in good condition no cuts big uh, slices in them anything like that and kind of look at the treads give a good visual on the tire pressure itself just making sure those tires one of them isn't flat so we always again just want to check those some of these tires can be ballasted with liquid so that's another thing just to think about when you're when you're doing your walk around in your tire inspection so now we're back around to the where we started at the back end of the machine here and this is one other thing and we'll do this check when we get in the cab but this is our backup arm here so so now I'm in the cab of the machine. One of the first things I'm going to check before I even uh, get buckled in here is I'm just going to open, check all my mirrors. Now is a good time to adjust those while the machine's not running and I don't have my seatbelt on at this point. So I'll just adjust the mirrors to where I want those for when I get to operating the machine. The next thing I'm going to do before I even start the machine is do a visual check on my seatbelt here. Just make sure there aren't any rips or tears, anything like that in the seat belt. Make sure it retracts back into the holder the way it's supposed to. And then I will put my seat belt on. When I start the machine up, this is the last daily walk around check on the machine. I'll start the machine. I won't do it right here in this, in this instructional video, but once I start the machine, I'll check the backup alarm and make sure it works as well. And that completes the daily walk around checks on the GC SCOM series.